Sania says, what's the Islamic ruling on post-mortem and what about medical students dissecting deceased human bodies for educational purposes? In Islam, we tend to honor the bodies of those who die. The Prophet ﷺ illustrates this by saying that the breaking of the bone of a person who's deceased is like the breaking of the bone of a, of a living person. This is due to the fact that many people think that when a person is dead, then he doesn't feel pain, which means that we can disrespect his body, throw him, toss him around, treat him roughly, that is the body, because he's dead. And the hadith shows us that the Prophet ﷺ honors the corpse of a Muslim, even while he's dead. And when we come to autopsy or post-mortem, this is usually done in or for a number of reasons. The scholars stated that it is permissible, if not mandatory, to do it in case of criminal investigation. So if a person dies and we have reasons to doubt the cause of death, we need to know whether he died poisoned or due to a blow to his body or internal bleeding or whatever, we need to investigate so that we can know who the perpetrator was. In this case, this is a legitimate reason because of the benefits of such post-mortem, we have to do it. The benefits exceed and overweigh the harm that is anticipated. The second reason would be in case of epidemics and how to stop them. And the third reason would be for educational purposes. And this is where we tend to differ and dispute. But without any doubt, in order to advance healthcare, students of medicine need to do this. And it's an essential part of their studies. Doing it to animals does not suffice. It's not sufficient. And yet, or hence, they are obliged to do it on human beings. However, the scholars had made conditions. First, that it cannot be done unless the person while alive gives the permission to do that after his death. And this condition is debatable again. Because even if I give you permission to dissect my body after my death for educational reasons, this doesn't allow me to give you the permission because I don't possess my body. I cannot allow people to take my heart, my liver, my eye, use my body parts after my death as organ donations, according to the most authentic opinion. It's an issue of dispute, but we've always repeated this, that this is not your body. Or in other words, this is not something you possess so that you can come and say, okay, I think 10 fingers are too many. I'm gonna take away my pinky. I don't need it. Someone who used to drive 
a manual transmission car, bought, buying an automatic says, I don't need the left leg, let me amputate it anymore. This is ridiculous. You do not possess the body, so you are not entitled to donate body parts. Likewise, you cannot give them the permission to do autopsy on your body after your death, post-mortem. Now, the most authentic opinion in my view is that this is not permissible, with your permission. So how can we move on? How can we practice this? Scholars also say that you cannot perform post-mortem over corpses that belong to people who are known as ma'asumuddam, those who are prohibited for you to kill or to abuse or to attack which means that anyone who's Muslim, you cannot do that on him. Anyone who is living in Muslim lands, who has a covenant, you cannot do that. Any person, any citizen belonging to a country that we have a covenant with, which is almost every country in the world, except those who are enemies of Islam, who do not have covenants with the Muslim governments, in this case, yes. So who's left? Scholars say due to necessity, if you go to some poor countries who are not Muslim, the families are willing to sell the corpuses of their loved ones, their father, their brother, their son, who had died, and instead of burning him or burying him, they'd rather get a couple of thousand dollars or more and give it to medical research. In this case, the scholars say that this is okay and legitimate and there is nothing wrong in that, inshallah.